Seguimos en Negocios Televisión, seguimos atentos a las últimas horas con el foco puesto un día más en el 3 y atrás sin más dilación. Vamos a presentarles uno de los protagonistas sin duda de este tema. Hoy contamos con Avi Loe, científico de Harvard que está con nosotros una vez más en Negocios Televisión. Hi, Avi, thanks for being with us in Negocios TV, it's a pleasure. How are you here? Eh, pleasure to join you. We want to talk about your last uh, report. Uh, we see you in, in Medium. Uh, tell us about uh, this, this report, please. Yeah, so um, today uh, we um, uh, obtained the first uh, uh, image after uh, three I Atlas, the interstellar object, passed uh, closest to the sun from the Hubble Space Telescope. That's uh, a high resolution image. Uh, and what we see is a glow that uh, appears teardrop that is pointing towards uh, the sun. So there is an anti-tail, uh, an extension of the glow around the, the nucleus of 3i Atlas towards the sun. We've seen it before when 3i Atlas was approaching the sun. We saw that there was an extension, an elongation, an anti-tail directed towards the sun back then. That was uh, in July. And now we see it from the other direction when after 3i Atlas passed uh, closest to the sun, again, we see a teardrop shape with an extension towards the sun, an anti-tail. And that is a very peculiar phenomena. And uh, of course, uh, uh, there are several ways of trying to explain it. One is that uh, uh, as of now, we know that 3i Atlas uh, is, uh, uh, was uh, uh, accelerated by some non-gravitational force. Uh, and uh, that force is pushing it away from the sun. And if it were to shed the objects, uh, uh, if there is a, a cluster, a swarm of uh, smaller objects surrounding it, that, and, and these objects are not being pushed away from the sun, they would lag behind the object uh, in, a, in a configuration that is very similar to what we are seeing. So um, if you go back in time, all these objects were overlapping uh, with uh, 3i Atlas when it was closest to the sun, and now they are lagging behind it uh, with a, a, a glow uh, extended uh, towards um, the sun because they are scattering sunlight. Uh, so that's one way to explain it, that there is a swarm of small objects around it, and that's what is creating uh, this appearance of uh, not a spherical uh, glow, but a, a teardrop shape extended towards the sun. Another possibility is that uh, um, for some reason, uh, uh, the, the side facing the sun is uh, shedding uh, uh, pieces of ice, and those eventually get evaporated be before they have a chance to turn around and produce the standard uh, cometary tail that we often see around comets. Uh, but it's not fully understood uh, what the nature of this uh, uh, teardrop shape is. And of course, in the coming uh, weeks, we might learn more about it because we'll observe the, uh, the object with uh, hundreds of ground-based telescopes all around the, the Earth, uh, as well as with uh, the Webb telescope in addition to the Hubble Space Telescope. So um, that would be very interesting to find out. And also the composition of the jets uh, coming from the object uh, would be important to find out, and as well as the speed of the material in the jets, that would tell us uh, clearly whether it's a natural object or maybe something else. Waiting for more info, waiting for more uh, anomalies. Uh, Avi, I would like to ask you about uh, these anomalies. Uh, do they raise the low alert beyond the, the level four? Um, there are more anomalies now that we know about than uh, before uh, 3i Atlas passed closest to the sun. But uh, I'm hesitant at uh, revising the ranking uh, of 3i of Atlas on the lobe scale because uh, we're about to get much more information about it. So let's just be patient and wait. And uh, you know, once we see that, uh, we will be able to tell whether it's a zero on the lobe scale. In other words, it looks natural from all aspects. Or you know, there is something really strange about it that would raise uh, the ranking um, to a potentially technological object. I think we just need to, to wait a few more weeks uh, and, and then once we have that data, it should become clear what the nature of the object is. We're in for more info about uh, this triadlas, Avi, thanks for being with us. Again, it's a pleasure having you here. Thank you so much.
Thanks for having me. It's a great pleasure. Bueno, pues eh, seguimos analizando con Avi estos últimos informes acerca de Tres y Atlas, un momento con nuevas imágenes, un momento con muchas teorías que analizábamos esta misma semana con los mejores expertos en España. Les dejamos con esta entrevista con un científico también español.